So few of us left. Throughout history, the discussion of superhuman traits and the idea of the ideal human in physical, mental, or psychological form has influenced our thoughts and understanding of the world and the reality that surrounds us. While the concept of superpowers is still firmly rooted in the world of fiction, recent scientific and technological advancements have put the concept of superhumans in a very different context. The rise of superhumans in the scientific and technological world has brought about an entirely new kind of discussion on who we are as a species. While the idea of superhuman may be provocative and controversial to some, others embrace the concept as a means to investigate our future, our evolution. David Eagleman is a neuroscientist at Stanford University and an internationally best-selling author. According to him, the coming biological revolution will change the nature of humanity forever. When we try to perceive the reality around us, we're only perceiving a little bit of it. So we're made out of very small stuff and we're embedded in this extremely large cosmos. And the fact is that human brains are really terrible at perceiving reality at either of these scales. And that's because we didn't evolve for that. An example of this, take the, uh, the colors of our world. So. This is electromagnetic radiation that bounces off objects and hits specialized receptors in the back of our eyes. The part that we call visible light is actually less than a 10 billionth of the amount of light that's out there. Radio waves and x-rays and cosmic rays and microwaves and all this stuff is passing through your body and it's completely invisible to you. You have no idea that it's out there. There are thousands of cell phone conversations passing through your body right now and it's totally invisible to you. Why? It's because you don't have the specialized receptors for that frequency. Instead, you only have it for this little range in between. Now, it's not that this stuff is unseeable. Rattlesnakes, for example, include part of the infrared range in their view of reality. And honeybees include some of the ultraviolet range in their view of reality. It's just that you can't see any of this, at least not yet. David's research into our brain processes has led him to create new interfaces, such as sensory vest, and more recently, a wristband that can take in previously unseen information about the world around us, a reality that is better, more natural, as an extension of our biological existence. As we move into the future, we're going to increasingly be able to choose our own peripheral devices. We don't have to wait for Mother Nature's sensory gifts on her time scales, eyes and ears and nose and fingertips and so on. We don't have to wait around for that anymore because that takes several million or hundreds of millions of years for each new iteration. But instead, like any good parent, what she's given us is the capacity to go out there and create our own trajectory. And so the idea is we're living in a world of big data now. And is there a way to, instead of just having access to big data, to experience it directly? The key is, I think, with the right sorts of data compression, there's really no limits to the kind of data that we will be able to take in. And so, you know, just imagine an astronaut being able to float around and instead of look at all the monitors to understand how the International Space Station is doing, just they, they feel it at all times, or having access to the invisible states of your own health. So your, your blood pressure and the state of your microbiome and so on. All these things that are invisible to us, imagine having them made explicit so you're feeling that. As we learn more about the brain and begin to enhance it with new technology, we might gain some intriguing new abilities. We can create new senses for humans, from bat-like echolocation and seeing heat to electromagnetism. Another category that could unlock the door to superhuman abilities is genetic engineering. Modern genetic engineering and advances in cell biology are making it possible for scientists to alter human bodies and their genes, leading to discoveries that might one day allow for the development of humans who are physically or mentally enhanced beyond normal limits. We already have evidence of a natural genetic mutations that give some people abilities such as practically unbreakable bones, 20 times better vision, feeling no pain, and being much stronger than normal. Humans have evolved through many different global groups where the mutation of these genes allowed them to develop certain traits in order to survive in their particular environments. More than 99% of your genetic information is exactly the same as every other person on the planet, but 
it's in that less than 1% that things get interesting. Specific genetic variations allow some of us to acquire certain physical or mental characteristics that set us apart from the rest. For example, Researchers have studied DNA samples from professional athletes and discovered that those who are naturally faster than average also had certain genetic variations that helped them achieve their exceptional performance. They identified a variation of a gene called ACTN3 that is now commonly referred to as a gene for speed. It is a gene variant that is common among the world's fastest sprinting athletes. In the future, thanks to technology such as CRISPR, it would be possible to alter the human genome in such a way that every human being could be born with a genetic predisposition to a greater degree of strength, intelligence, speed, and so on. The rise of enhanced humans could bring about a new era of human evolution. This would have profound advantages over traditional genetic mutations that occur in nature. First, it would allow researchers to control what kind of changes they made and how those changes would affect an individual's physical and psychological development. Dr. George Church is widely recognized for his innovative contributions to genome science and his many pioneering contributions to chemistry and biomedicine. According to him, we are entering a new age where ethical reasons for restricting scientific inquiry will no longer hold water. While the idea of superhumans raises many questions, it also opens the doors to endless possibilities in our future evolution. Another possibility to greatly enhance physical and cognitive abilities in humans, according to a growing number of researchers, is to merge with technology and become cyborgs. This is a projection based on the exponential growth of technologies and inevitable advancement of human development. Technological evolution is moving at a pace that often exceeds human imagination, if we continue to accelerate at this rate, then in just a few decades it will be hard to imagine what it will mean to be a human. Futurist Ray Kurzweil predicts that in a couple of decades, most human beings will gradually evolve into a super race of immortal cyborgs called transhumans with super bodies and super brains. According to Kurzweil, the super brains of the humanoid androids will have greater capacity not only in and of themselves, but also because they will be able to function more efficiently by storing some of their mental capacity in the cloud of the future greatly expanded internet through brain-computer interfacing. We're going to merge with this technology. I'd say we've already done that to some extent. Medical nanorobots will go inside our brain, connect our neocortex to the cloud. We'll do it directly in the 2030s, so it'll be just like what happened two million years ago when we got these big foreheads and we got this additional neocortex and put it at the top of the hierarchy. That was the enabling factor for humor and language and music and so on. We'll do it again, only unlike two million years ago, it won't be a one-shot deal. We couldn't keep growing this enclosure without making birth impossible. The cloud is pure information technology. It's not limited by a fixed enclosure. So we will become more and more non-biological. So people say, oh, we're gonna lose our humanity. Well, if you define human as being necessarily bi purely biological, we're already not purely human anymore because we're not purely biological anymore. And we're gonna become increasingly non-biological, but that, that's who we are. I mean, that is the definition of human, the, the species that changes itself, that creates tools that goes beyond our limitations. This, of course, raises many questions. How will this technology affect us as a society? Will it be abused? Who will benefit from this technology? Will those who don't have access to the technology be left behind in a society where they are no longer able to keep up? Questions like these have many people worried about the future, but it is undeniable that we are on the verge of a new era of evolution in which humans will be able to increase their intelligence and capabilities beyond imagination. Natural selection has been operating in humans over the past few thousand years. The difference in the future is that it will be driven by science and technology, and it will happen much faster than it could ever happen in nature. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell to never miss videos like this.